Hello, my name is Eric Humphrey and welcome to my channel here on YouTube. Um, for those of you who have been looking at my videos over the last several years, um, you know that I'm the individual that is claiming that the comic book The Crow was based on, and it was. Um, if you see some of my videos here, you'll see um, the very first issue of the comic book, which is this right here, The Crow, and it's not a coincidence that the cover looks like me, because it is a painting by me done by James Obar on October 31st, 1988, and into November. He told me when he called me the next morning that he worked on it all night. They stayed up all night doing this watercolor. And that's why he used it on the very first cover. And that's also why all the other covers look different. And why every time he does the crow, or draws the crow, it looks different than from the very first cover. Because he was doing a portrait of the guy he met. And, um... The reason James Obar and I had a falling out is when he found out that I was not just dressing up that way willy-nilly, created some character out of fantasy, but I was dressing up that way because uh, because my, my beautiful friend and would-be girlfriend, if she wasn't murdered, Tammy Grimes. We were mimes in a 4-H pantomime troupe. Now this is Tammy's uh, mother, her older sister Tina. This is Tammy right here, and her little sister Tracy. And all three of these girls were, our, were in our 4-H pantomime troupe. Um, along with my brother, Steve Cash, and uh, Aaron Mahone, and Dawn, or Dawn Lightcap. And I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you a quick picture of them here. Let's uh, close this out. Go back. And this is a collage. When my book got put out they made me reduce my photo count so I blended a bunch of the photos together. But this is a good picture of everybody. This is my brother David. That's Tammy, that's Tina, that's Aaron Mahone, that's Steve Cash, that's Don Lightcap, it was her father, um, that was our teacher, and he ran the troop, and that's a picture of me when I first joined. And a little family picture, and these are just friends of mine, my brother's best friend Brian, he died in 1980. Um, kids and girls we knew. My mother, my brother, and I. I would like to show you all the pictures of Tammy. This is Tammy, I believe, in the sixth grade. She would gotten chubby. A bit, and there was a reason for that. A sad reason. This is Tammy in the seventh grade. I know that for sure. This is Tammy in the eighth grade. This is the same picture used on her um, graveyard stone. This is a dedication that appeared in the yearbook Tammy died. I was in uh, high school. She was still in junior high her last year. If you'd like to read it, please do. This is uh, Tammy's gravestone. Full name is Tammy Lynn Grimes. She was... Tammy was born on... Uh, September 13th, 1968. She was murdered by this individual
Lawrence Hahn, on January 11, 1988, with a 30 odd-6 rifle, he shot her through the throat. Her parents made it over to the house to say goodbye to her before she died. It was snowy. Her sister Tina ran over in her bare foot, feet and yelled at Lawrence out on the porch as Tammy died in her parents' arms. Um, this is not an easy subject for me to talk about. It never has been. That's why I don't really post videos. I hate this story. I, I hated my childhood and I hated this whole part of my life. Um, Tammy's death really it killed me in a lot of ways. It still hurts. Pain never dies. You know, they, um, a lot of psychologists make the stupid, dumbass, fucked up, excuse my language, assumption. Children are resilient. No, they are not. You damage a child, it's just like a junkie or an alcoholic. It's something you deal with every day. It doesn't go away. It stays with you. It's something you have to recognize and deal with. Um, whenever I shoot these videos, I always lose my train of thought because I, I, I want to say certain things in certain order so that so that people understand um, my mental state and emotional state at the time of Tammy's death. And, you know, so this is my page here on YouTube. That's why Tammy's at the top. Tammy's also um, the agreement I had with James Obar after we met. Here's the rest of the videos. Um, let me talk about those. For, um, this is an interview. My, uh, the girl who was helping me with my book. When I originally put this up, this page up, like it says here, when I first posted, when I posted my first video here, I did it as a means to help myself to embrace my past so that I could write about it. That's why. I also did it in the hopes that um, it would get me in contact with people from my past. Um, I also did it, be and why I wanted to get in touch with some of these people from my past is um, one, um, well, specifically, um, people that hung out um, at the bar where me and James Obar met, um, which was, it's still there today. It's a place called City Club. It's a goth punk bar located in downtown Detroit on the corner of Cass and Bagley inside the Leland Hotel. You used to be able to go through the lobby up the stairs to the main hotel desk to um, um, near the main hotel desk to the left and you could get into City Club. Now you have to go around the side of the building from the parking lot and go on the side door. It's not even marked. Um, you have to know where it is. You just go on the side door, you go upstairs, it's very creepy and dark and you know and odd paintings on the wall and um, I do have some video on it actually I've never tried to pull up I, I download it on the computer and then let's see keep the camera up there uh, and that's not the one we want okay videos do 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 There we go. Let's take a little peek here. See if I can show you the inside. When coming to City Club, this is where we would usually park along this strip to avoid the people moving. Or as we used to call it, the Detroit Surf. Show the inside. 
here we are at 400 Leland House. From the main entrance. Yeah, so, um... As I said, back in the 80s, the entrance used to be through the front. But it's now along the side. Now let's see if we can see what the... Hey, man. Back in the 80s, you'd head up this stairwell. To the upstairs lobby. And then it would be right down this hall. Which would be now you enter from the back. And this side. And this would be the hall. No bitches, no guns, no bitches. I'm not getting you. And that would be it. This is the inside of the old Leland house. And this would be the old front desk. There used to be a pool outside, also. Concrete, that's what Detroit is. It's to be the pool area. It's to be the pool area. This is the corner back side of Leland House, now the entrance to City Club. Back parking lot where I used to whip many ass. And this is the door. This is the door right here. Back then it used to be a little more artistic. That's it. That's the door. Um, if you stand in front of the building, you go to your left. It'd be on the left side of the building. And I think this is where we go inside here. Well, let's see. Oh yeah, it still looks the same. Drawings on the side, uh, paintings, strange artwork, the gothic. They've changed over the years. I mean, this really used to be a lot better. A lot more better. Yeah, you can be my pod, yeah. This is the last video. Let's see, we'll turn the volume up on this one. And this is it. The inside is it. The main entrance the way it is nowadays. Over there is the bar. They yelled for me to turn off the camera at this point. Some of the people sitting. That's her. She told me to turn off the camera. Let's see if we can back this thing up. This thing sucks. All right, this over here is a bar right here. All right, it's got a little pillar here. And this is over here, this is the other pillar right here. Right on this corner was I is where I was standing ordering drinks. James Obar was on the other side. When um, um he heard me ordering drinks, he looked up, saw me standing there, his eyes got all um we got a little sparkle in his eyes. And at first because it's a goth punk bar. You also have your, you have heterosexuals, homosexuals, bisexuals, you know, all kinds there. And uh, he, uh, I don't know how often he went there. Um, it was the first time I remember ever recognizing the guy there. But when he first looked at me and came around the side, I thought it was going to be some guy trying to hit on me. You know, no big deal. You just tell him, hey, I'm straight. And they leave you alone. And uh, one of my buddies there, DJ Tom, back in the day, he's a uh, homosexual, bisexual, actually. And, uh, you know, um, he found out I was heterosexual. And, uh, you know, he's turned me on to um, a lot of different music or stuff I had heard on the radio. I didn't know what the names were. And uh, 
but Todd was always great about that and uh, letting other guys know that, you know, he's straight, just, you know, you don't go that way. But I used to hang out with Todd there and sometimes at another bar that was called Todd's on Thanksgiving we'd go there with a bunch of friends of mine. We'd, uh, you know, after Thanksgiving we'd go hang out and have some drinks and uh, hang out with some friends. And my friend Liz, whose name I, last name I don't remember. So that's where I met James Olbar. And the agreement we had, you know, um, after we talked about for, I could say at least, you know, anywhere between, had, had to have been a half hour to 45 minutes. He, and, uh, you know, the agreement we had is that he would um, dedicate the very first issue to Tammy Lynn Grimes. That when you open that comic book, you should have seen this comic book is lovingly dedicated to Tammy Lynn Grimes. That's all I wanted. I want no other payment. But the fallout I had with James Obar is because when he found out that, you know, I was somewhat of a vigilante and what I was doing on Halloween, he, um, uh, he wanted to change it. Um, and I was giving him all this background information on myself just so he could give more depth to the character. You know, because he told me that he had been trying to get a comic book published for years. I don't know how many years. He said for years. And that he had never been able to come up with a good character or idea that they were willing to publish. Uh, but they published The Crow, which I like ravens better than Crow. Everybody at City Club back then knew me as Eric the Raven. And that's why, you know, I am trying to get in touch with people from, from my past. Um different individuals um, and for these videos I'm shooting I've tried to like follow a script I had in my head I've even written things out how what I'm going to talk about here and there and um, and um, I'm just gonna do it from the hip um, I'm a Gulf War veteran I, I want you to understand that I was um, during the Gulf War I was on board the USS Midway we were the oldest aircraft carrier in the fleet, in the 7th fleet. I was stationed out of Yokosuka, Japan at the time. And because we were the oldest, we were the closest um, for most of the time. Um, well, for the whole duration of it, um, during Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm, which was the war. Um, we were exposed to a, a certain amount of sarin gas. Um, then we were forced to go up to the officer's medical to receive some vaccinations, which was odd because our vaccinations really were usually held in the enlisted man medical. There was an enlisted man's medical and an officer's. We were taken up to the officers. Uh, as we walked in, um, was walking down the passageway to, to get in line, I could hear um, Lieutenant Commander Clayton, who's the head of medical, arguing with the mastered arms that the brig was full. Guys were refusing to take this shot. They were refusing to enter them into our records. Um, guys on, they separated us into two lines. Guys in one line got one shot, two pills from an unlabeled bottle. Guys in my line, I got two shots, two pills. Um, they refused to enter it in my record, I asked. I made a thing about it. Threatened to take me to a brig. Oh, yeah. Before I sat my was going to take the shot, an officer Clayton pulled about 20 or 30 of us off to the side. Threatened us with death or court martial during the time of war. If I ever see Officer Clayton, I'm going to break him. And I still feel that way towards this man. He destroyed my fucking life and sold the United States government. And I'm not going to get up. But what it is is um, I feel like my nervous system has been stripped. If I get too happy, I get sick. If I get too sad, I get sick. I'm always agitated all the time. Um, it never goes away. And it's no way to fucking live at all. Um, so when Ober, so that's why I don't like shooting these videos. This is a sensitive subject and even more so when you're living with Gulf War Syndrome, when you're living with a, uh, a nervous condition. I am a, um, you can say I am an emotionally disturbed individual because of my childhood. So what we're going to do here and we'll leave that up again. 
going to take this down. We're going to open Google Maps here. Like I said, I was looking for people. Um, people who knew me at City Club. And along with people I saved and people I heard. Now let's see if this is going to come up. Okay, we got her up here. Okay, Google Earth here. We're going to start off. Got some bookmarks over here. Emmy's okay, killer. Um, this is Lawrence, Lawrence Hans' house back then. That's where Tammy was murdered. Right inside this living room. I guess this is where Tina stood. Now, I'm just down the road here. Through these trees or whatever. The Right where this tree is. Stop sign. A stop sign. Now it looks far on Google Maps, but it's not. Um, so, used to be a rose bush that grew here, red roses. Tammy used to like to stop and smell them. This is one of the entrances to the back of our field. It's also, um, train tracks there. And right up here, right here is Tammy's house. This is where Tammy lived and grew up. So she spent 13 years of her life. I also lived in this neighborhood. Um, Oh, these things are stupid. And Han. Alright. I'll put it on here. Oh, here we go. And Lawrence moved away. He moved over here. Down from Mount Zion Church. Okay. Now somewhere here, this right in the middle. You know, I think it was this house right here. I can't be a hundred percent sure. But this might be it. It's one of these houses along the street right here. I'm not sure which. But the night, um, same night at Meadow Bar, I found out where Lawrence lived. And I'd, when Tammy was murdered, when Tammy was uh, killed, um, I just went crazy. I didn't want to live anymore. I got real suicidal. Started drinking a lot and doing drugs. And um, I uh, went over... Um, to Lawrence Hans, my plan was, um, which I came up with the night Tammy died, or next day or week, I was going to murder Lawrence Hahn at his house in front of his parents and whoever else was there. And then I was going to go in the back of the field, back of our neighborhood. I was going to blow my brains out afterwards. I was going to keep one bullet for me. Well, when I went over to Lawrence Hans, it's Steve Cash went over there with me. Um, they had moved away. And that's how I ended up. And after that, I just started going out every Halloween and looking for bullies. Um, so I left there Halloween night after beating up Lawrence. And, uh,
first time I went out on Halloween looking for bullies was in this neighborhood. Right, pretty much just all through here. This whole area. This is a graveyard. It's one of the places I used to hang out when I was a kid. Oh, this area right here. But then, 1985, a friend took me to City Club, and I started hanging out at City Club every Halloween. Ta da! Or in Detroit. Alright, look, there's City Club. Okay, at the cast, corner of Cass and Bagley. This is right downtown Detroit. This is um, the. used to be the Civic Center, now it's the GM buildings. Give you a better look. Oh, there's a people mover. As you call the Detroit surfboard. You get drunk and see if you could go around it. There you go. All right down this way would be Joe Lewis. Over here, right there, that's like Greek town. You get the general idea there. Let's go back to City Club. This is the area I used to wander. Now, I don't remember everything. I did on Halloween night. Oh, we usually you park right down here, right on the street, instead of parking in the parking lot. And let's see, I don't know what year this occurred, but down here, it's one of the places I was walking to patrolling. There used to not be a fence here. This used to look different. There was like some pillars or something. But it's like a little pocket in here. Like it's a, you could uh, stand in, right? And um, and uh, one Halloween night, remember which, I heard some girl screaming, "Don't, don't." Um, and I looked in and saw some guy on her. And she was, you know, yelling, don't, and stop, and screaming it. And I asked if she was okay. Um, she saw me. She looked around, saw me from behind, you know, behind this. This guy was on her, around six foot. And uh, I think he was he was trying to rape her. I told him to get the fuck off her. He came over and stood over here. And I, I think there was like a pillar. They've changed this, I believe. And uh, he came out and uh, said some shit to me. Um, I clocked him. Hit him real hard. Knocked him right out with one punch. He uh, So he went down. I then tried to approach a girl and she screamed. So I came back out to here on the, on the street. And I was looking for a cop car. And I saw some kids coming down the street here. Um, or a couple. Um, a guy and a girl and I told them some girl over here was just getting raped and I knocked the guy out and um, I asked him if they'd keep an eye on her while I went to go get the police and um, the girl went over to see who it was and it turned out it was her friend and they were supposed to meet each other outside and um, they got the girl up and she was saying he tried to rape me, he tried to rape me, and they thought she was talking about me, that I had tried to rape her, and I told them, no, that guy lay in there tried to rape her. The girl was hysterical, so obviously the guy was trying to rape her. Um, so I had a little, you know, argument with them and stuff, and they got in their car, and I'm like, okay, you know, sorry, and I started walking away. 
And um, as I was walking away, the guy, the boyfriend, who was in the driver's seat, got out of the car, yelled over at me to stop and said, sorry, sorry, um, we thought it was you she was talking about. And he, he got out of the car, and the girl got out of the car. They both shook my hand, gave me a hug, gave me a hug, and, and told me they and told me they were um, sorry that they had suspected it was me. Um, they then had the girl asked me to come over to the window and shook my hand and thanked her, thanked me, and I told her no problem. You know, be careful about the type of guys you meet down here and who you go you know, out to a parking lot with. You should always take a friend. There's some very unpleasant people here. And that's one incident I can remember. And I would I would absolutely love you know one of the reasons. I wanted to uh, get my information on YouTube and into the media here in Detroit, but nobody, none of the papers will pick up on my story, none of the news organizations will pick up on my story. Either they don't care, they just don't believe me, I don't know. But they, you know, I sent them letters, multiple letters, none of them even bothered to get back to me, contact me. I've left them messages, they don't want to contact me. I tried to get my story in the Metro Times, they want to charge me. I ain't got the funds anymore. After writing this book, I'm broke. So, uh, that's one incident I can remember. Another incident. I'm going to take you through all the ones I remember. I'm going to take you to the very first one. Okay. I'm going to go right down here. This is, there's a diner right here. Yeah, this is the diner used to hang out in. Um, these two windows are um, the, the dance floors in City Club. It's uh, the main bars in one room, the dance floors in another. This is the dance floor we used to uh, sit out here um, on the ledge right here and smoke joint. And there was a club here down right down below it. It might have been, well, it couldn't have been that door. It had to have been this door. And, um, yeah. Oh, people could see us going in. It could have been this door. It could have been this door right here. I think it was. I think it was, the door was right here. And I think this is where the store used to be originally. Um, but some girls, they, they had seen what I look, looked like on Halloween. And I'd thrown them a joint down. I, um, this was a strictly a... A club. This, you know, it was a. Most people hung out there were African American. White people were no knew not to go down there to get your ass whipped. And the guy who kind of ran this side of town, that was the place he hung out. I got invited in there once um, by two of these guys who I'm also looking for. These guys knew me as um, Eric, and uh, on Halloween the Raven. They'd call me Eric the Raven. And they're actually the two guys, when I was talking to Obar that night, the two guys that came into the bar um, and said, Yo, what's up, Eric the Raven? Duh, duh, the Raven. And James R. was like, your name's Eric Draven? He goes, that's a good name. And he wrote it down. Why he didn't put it in the comic book? Why did he try to say um, this other lady came up with it for the, the movie? I believe he, he's doing that because he's... he's you know, he's covering up the fact of where he really got the comic book and that he screwed me. Okay, but there, and um, the, these two guys I hung out with, I've heard they're still alive. Um, one of them works at a garage, and you hear I wasn't able to get in contact with him. Um, everybody at the club knew these two guys. They, they, they wore uh, suits, always wore hats, black patent shoes, and uh, they do the electric glide, or we'd call the slide. And, you know, one day I got out there and mimicked them, and I was a mime, and I can, I'm quite uh, fluid in my movements. So, you know, my buddy Eric McClure and Art said it, 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 it's like we all fit together. It's like I belong dancing with them. So I used to, we used to do this all the time on Friday nights, me, these guys would hang out. And uh, one night they invited me down to Prima Donna's, was the name of the bar, and went down there. And uh, hanging out for maybe about 10 minutes, and this guy, black guy, you know, everybody's a brother, comes over and he tells me, you know, hey man, not to be racist or any shit like that, but yo, um, you know, it's nice not to see no white folks every once in a while, to just be hanging out at the club and just, you know, all the brothers. I was like, hey, cool, no problem. 
So I left. The two guys went with me. And he told me, man, that's the guy who runs this, you know, runs this side of town, man. It's not somebody you want to go, you know, fucking with. Well, man, about an hour later, we're upstairs, and he comes upstairs um, to apologize um, for asking me to leave and told me, you know, once again, it's nothing to do with you being white. And he goes, but you're really cool about it and nice, so I wanted to come up and buy you a drink and drink with you. And I ended up hanging out with this guy all night. And uh, he told me he'd heard about what I had been doing <laughs> around uh, City Club and that he had absolutely no problem with it. Okay, the first time, 1985, right here, I believe this was a store. And I was out with my friend, Eric, uh, Colleen McClure, Eric McClure's sister, older sister. I used to hang out with her first before I hung out with Eric. Um, she had gone inside City Club. I was walking down. I had come around the parking lot. I was walking down here to go to the store to get some cigarettes. And there's some people hanging out here. And they yelled out, man, uh, he, he's got a gun. He just robbed the store. And this guy come running out gun in hand and a bag of money paper bag and he's coming right by me right here and um, he was going along to my left side which let's take it from this direction as if you're me coming this direction walking this direction this guy was gonna try to pass on my left and he stumbled so I clocked him in the jaw knocked him out and smashed his face into the right here into the gutter and went sliding face first and was out cold. <laughs> and then went into the, just walked into the store, told my wine pack of cigarettes, this and that. And they're like, hey, you just, and, you know, one of the store owners, um, people who work there, was like, you know, you just knocked that guy out. Thank you. You know, you just, you're going to have to stay around and file a police report. And they didn't charge me for any cigarettes. And I told them, well, that's, that's your thing. And I just left and walked across, walked left and went back, uh, went and met with Ka Colleen and and uh, went into a city club for the night. But that was the very first guy I remember uh, messing up or protecting. And since we're right over here, I'm not doing any of these in orders, but I'm sure those people who saw me, um, plus the police report would have mentioned what I looked like. Um, I would I would absolutely like to have the police reports. I tried. I contacted the Detroit Police Department, um, told them the location of the area, and I was looking for police reports of incidences that took place there on Halloween. I was informed. I don't know if it was back in the 90s or whatever, what he told me. I don't remember exactly, but he told me that all those records are gone, that they kept them in the basement, the basement flooded, and that all those police records are gone, and that's why I don't have them. But the incident on Lawrence Hahn in Clarkston, Michigan, um, I don't think it was the Clarkston Police Department, but I called the police department. Either Clarkston or Waterford has a re police report of me hitting Lawrence Hahn at his house. Um, and I'm going to go back to Lawrence Hahn right now. Um, Lawrence Hahn, when I knocked on the door, his mother answered the door. I'm dressed up like you see in the comic book. Pulled this out of out of storage and used this sat in a box for years. Here's the here's the jacket I used to wear. And if you notice, look, it's just you know, it's all beat up, worn out, the belt's lost. I don't think there's a burn mark. Oh yeah, there's still white friggin' some makeup on there. Yeah, it's a jacket I used to wear. It doesn't really fit me anymore. I could never bring myself to throw it out, though. And if you look, when you look at the comic book, you'll notice there's a little line there. That's why the collar looks the way it is, because the collar on my jacket, it's like a priest collar almost. It's the little belt and the little hook thing on the side, and that's what that little line on the picture. We'll pop that up real quick. And these programs don't seem to really mess with it. Yeah, there's a better one though. This one's a little dark. You can see a little line here, but that's why this collar is like that. 
And if you notice all the other collars and all the other joints, he does it with a lapel. And I'm going to pop this up for you real quick too. If you notice my hair lays the same way. I used to have this, this is, I have a mohawk, it's not a mullet. So when my hair is off to the side, I had this mohawk, big giant wide mohawk. You can look at the lips, the eyes, the eyebrows, the chin. He drew me without any ears. I think he doesn't like ears. But that's my face. So, let's see, Lawrence Hahn, after I punched old Lawrence Hahn. Um, I answer, his mother answered the door. I asked if Lawrence was there. She said, yes, who am I? I said, I'm an old school friend. She said, okay, called Lawrence over. Lawrence comes to the door, and he's still got that same Pontiac attitude. You know, walking to the door. I'm like, hey, man. He goes, hey. He's like, uh, you remember Tim? He goes, yeah, I remember Tim. And right through the screen door, I popped him. His eyes rolled up into the back of his head. So all you can see was white. And he went backwards, just like that, right on the ground, pow, with his head. His mother was standing right behind him, up against the wall, looking at me. I think she, she was a little worried about him. She had the right to be. So I'm absolutely 100% sure she gave a very nice and accurate description of what I look like. And that police report should be from 1987 Halloween or 1988. Now, um, the first time I came across... Um, Lawrence Hahn, somebody at the church told me they knew who he was. Um, I don't know how I ended up talking to these people about Tammy. Someone brought up something depressive and I said something and they, she told me she knew where he lived. And well, he's right across the street, Mount Zion. You know, I'm going to pop you back there real quick. Mount Zion Temple. Do, 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 do. Alright. Hmm. Why is that got Mount Zion way up there? Right now I'm confused a little. Now, yeah, okay. All right, here we go. This is Mount Zion Temple. We are standing up here, the main doors. The night I went and punched Lawrence Hahn, we went in here, pulled in the back of the church, took the license plate off my car, had friend Eric McClure driving. And uh, so, and this was the store. It looked different back then. The entrance is just over here. When I went over to confront Lawrence Hahn, he disappeared from me. I, I couldn't physically see him at all. Um, was, I believe that was because I wanted to hurt him so bad. And back we go. Chamomile tea for my nerves. I'm trying to shoot this. So here we are back at City Club and go right back down over here. Do, do, do. Da, da. Come on, computer. There you go. Oh, people in the middle of the street. Okay. So at next occasion, I'm walking down to here. Where is it? Uh oh. I am off a little. Okay. Where's the bar? Dun, 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 dun. What the? Uh -oh. oh, okay. Nope. Way right over here. Alright. Okay, so. Let's see. Let's get oriented. Oh, alright. There's the Leland Hotel. Okay. And over here's a bar. Oops, a little too far. Right here, yeah, this is it. Now, 
on another occasion, I'm walking down here. Um, this is the rail system. This is Times Square Rail Station uh, for the people in Wilford. Um, I want to get closer to this edge. There's a guy, as I'm walking, I'm probably about, I just, probably about right here. And I see this pimp is over here with this girl. The cars are parked this way back then. They weren't parked up against the building that way or parked this way. And uh, this pimp, he uh, just punched one of his girls in the mouth. And I saw something white go fly out of her mouth and ding, ding, ding. Who even heard it? Hit the pavement there. I got up closer. I could see it was a molar out of her mouth. And the pimp who's big muscular guy, well, maybe almost uh, six foot, comes right out and he's facing the, the direction you're looking. I'm walking this way so I'm facing, I'm facing going down the street this way and he's facing in this direction. And he says something to me about, hey man you want some blah blah blah. And see I was in my, after you know he hit her uh, on, on Halloween, you commit any act like that, you're going to draw my attention. And we're going to go right then and there. I'm already decided, once I've already seen him hit her, that when I saw the molar, this guy's getting fucked up. Sticks his face out like an idiot. And says something to me about me wanting a girl or something like that. I don't miss a beat while I'm walking. I don't stop. I don't pause. I just keep moving like I'm almost ignoring him and he, when he's perfectly where I want him. Er, I clocked him in the jaw and I hit him so hard his jaw shattered. It sounded like if you, you ever take a bottle and you drop it or throw it the way it breaks or you throw bottles. I was a stupid punk little kid at a wall and if you get it like right between the wall and the pavement and hit it, it just shatters. It makes this certain sound. That's what this guy's jaw sounded like. I kept walking. I think it had gotten to about right about here. The uh, prostitute is coming after me. She's angry and pissed off. And I stop. And I don't turn around. I just tilt my head down and look up at her and grin at her and smile and ask her why she's not grateful. And she stops, pauses, and looks at me, um, scared. And I told her, he hit you, I hit him. I then made my way down past the bar. Turned here. There used to be a throughway here, a thoroughway. You could get right through here. Walked all the way down. Let's see if it will allow me all the way through. Dun dun. Dun dun. And it does. I walked down. Yeah, came out. Looked back down the street and I saw that the cops were down there. And that uh, there's an ambulance and they were picking him up and police were filling out a police report. Now I'm sure the prostitute, if she's alive, remembers this. Okay. Another incident that happened. Okay. Now this, this city club, or you know, the Leland Hotel again, right here, this, see this little part of the fence? This fence used to extend all the way here, and there's still part of the old fence. It used to come all the way here, and right here where this guy's standing right here, there used to be about an Olympic-sized swimming pool right here. Right here is, is. You had to get into a parking lot through here. You couldn't go through this way. And it was all fenced off around the pool. And, uh, Sometimes people would come out there and be skinny dipping or jump the fence and take all their clothes in. And I've seen a few people get arrested drunk and drunk and being horny and being exhibitionists. And one night on my patrol, I'd walk around these buildings and stuff looking for people. Um, 
I was smoking a joint and used to be able to step into these. It wasn't flat. You could step into these doorways were recessed in. And it pretty sure I was standing right here. Yeah, I was standing in this doorway it was recessed in. And then I hear this couple coming, walking down the street. And they're being harassed some, by some blonde boy, um, taller than me, only was six foot. And he's asking him to give him some money and shit. And then telling him, man, you got to give me some money. And he's going to mug him. So I step out from here, walk up towards him. You know, see these, this couple, um, white guy and a white girl, blonde. And uh, he had dark hair, and the kid who was trying to mug him, he's wearing a leather coat, and uh, I remember he was wearing a leather jacket, he had blonde hair, like a Billy Idol haircut. And I walked up to him, told him to leave him alone. He told me, you better, you know, you know, you uh, better watch it. You don't know who you're fucking with. <laughs> uh... And he put his hand in his back pocket, and I told him, "You better keep your hands where I can see him, man." Are you gonna get? You know, I said something to him, and uh, he didn't remove his hand from his back pocket, so I bitch slapped him really hard, almost knocked him to the ground. He then became as polite and as kind as a puppy. <laughs> told him to get the fuck going; he was gonna get worse, and he walked down here a ways. Stood there with the couple; they thanked me. You know, they thought he was going to mug them. And I said, yeah, he was going to mug you. And I asked him if they smoke and shared my joint with him. I then walked back down towards here. Little old blondie standing here. And then he tries to befriend me, walking with me and shit like that. And I told him what he was. I go, look, man, I don't know if you're living on the street or what, but you don't go around mugging people. You don't do shit like that. That's not the way to be. You know, you'd get fucking hurt doing that. I could kill you. And I would. I was frightening him. I wanted him to be afraid. He needed to be afraid. That's not to hurt people anymore. Now, this area is all open over here. But there used to be a parking lot structure. And actually, back here, this parking lot structure, the way it's built, all this right here, exactly the same as the other one except the other one had, instead of being one story high it was three to four there was several more levels to it it was a lot bigger okay that parking lot stood here for years Alrighty. Also here at City Club, like I told you, the pool was over here, back here, right here at the very back of the parking lot, there was um, two or three basketball courts here, right in this area. Yeah, this is where most of my assaults took place. And over here is the castle. I want to give you a shot at it. I used to love that castle. I'd always go and take a walk around the castle. Never bumped anybody over there. Let me get back to the, over here. And there used to be light poles here. Several light poles. Um, and right there, if you want to come to City Club, this is the door you're going to go into. And the chick who ran it back then, um, last time I was there several years ago and I was working on this book, still there, still running it. Um, okay. Um, one night I'm, I come walking in the parking lot. Oh, to let you know. Um, these guys who, uh, two dudes, two brothers, black guys, um, nice gentlemen. Um, I believe they used to just sell weed and smoke weed out in the back of the parking lot. They used to hang out some club, the doorways right around here. I can't remember what the name of it was. They'd always park in the same spot next to this light pole. And their car was either green or red. I can't re can't remember because the light was like a yellow light, so it changed the color of it. 
and the it wasn't a Cadillac. I think they had, uh, but it looked like a Caddy. It was a four door. Um, I think it was a Lincoln. Pretty, I'm pretty sure it was a Lincoln. And they had seen several of these incidences. Um, I would love to find these guys, um, or you know, get my information out there. These guys could tell you the shit I did, and they used to laugh their fucking asses off. And um, it was 1988, 89. They told me that man. We don't even go into the club on Halloween anymore because we don't want to miss what the fuck you're going to do. So one night, and a lot of these, man, I'd come back from my walk. I'd come into this area um, here and, uh, you know, and, you know, come to go back into the bar. I'd use the side entrance instead of the front um, when I'd sneak out on my friends, Eric and Art McClure, whoever else I was with at City Club. Let's see, one night I come in, there's a big tall dude, man, way bigger than me. He's six foot something, beating the shit out of this guy, kicking the shit out of him. And, um, and uh, you know, I told him, you know, you got him down, man. I, I, I think you can let him up now. And he's like, uh, you know, better fuck you, man. You gonna get your, you want some too, or something like that? You know, I pushed him back off the guy, helped the dude up. And told him, hey man, once you got a guy down, he's had enough. And the guy threatened me. I then clocked him in the jaw, knocked him to the ground, was, and kept punching him. Every time he tried to get up, he was on his knees. And every time he pushed himself, excuse me, <laughs> up off the ground, um, I clocked him again. And uh, I wasn't hitting him as hard as I could, just wanted him to feel a lot of pain. And he was raising up his hand, trying to block my punches, begging and pleading for me not to hit him again. I then picked him up off the ground, even helped to brush him off. Now, every time I'd bump into people like this, I'd give them a talk about respect, not being a bully, what it's like to be on the other end. Now, over here, the guys, the two brothers, they're laughing their asses off in the car. Usually after I'd see them, I'd go over and smoke a joint. And there was another incident where I came, came into the parking lot. And there was, I think it, there was seven people here. Um, a real tall six-foot guy, the rest were shorter dudes. And there was, um, at first I thought it was one girl with them and uh, six guys. And they were all in a circle, and there's some other guy on the ground. They were all kicking him and beating the shit out of him. And I walked up, joined their circle, and asked what was going on. And they stopped, a little confused, <laughs> and then picked up the guy and pulled him away and asked him if those were his friends. And he told me, fuck no, man, they're not my friends. And they tried to tell me they were his friends and some shit like that. I then stood in the middle of the circle, facing the tallest guy. At the same time, whenever you're going to fight people like this at night or a group of individual, wherever the light is, keep it to your back. Because anybody who crosses that light or is in that light is going to cast a shadow you can see at your feet and in front of you. It just allows you to see if they're going to move. If their shadow moves, they're moving. So as I'm facing this guy, I got the light over here that used to be over the door casting their shadows. One of the guys to my left threw a punch. I popped him in the nose, broke his nose, he went down, another threw a punch, I popped him, put his down, then some little short blonde guy, what I thought was a little blonde guy, I broke his, their nose too. So we had three broken noses. Every Three people are bleeding. The big tall guy never moves, keeps his arm around his girl, puts his one hand, his hands up and says, I don't want none, man. They then, you know, as after I hit this girl, they yell, man, you just hit a girl. And I was like, yeah. I said, hey, I told the girl, I go, you're going to dress like a dude, you're going to act like a dude, you're going to want to fight like a dude, you're going to get hit like a dude. And she did. Once again, these guys over in the car, laughing their asses off. They saw all this. Okay. Another night. MSU boys. Kids from, uh, no, not MSU, kids from Michigan University, frat boys. 
they would sometimes come to City Club. They'd stick out like a sore thumb the way they would dress. Most people are dressed in black or some weird type of costume or something, but they're totally out of place. I usually like to fuck with some of the goth kids, especially when you'd have some of these guys wearing a skirt, black skirt and fishnet pantyhose, which this tall, lanky, six-foot individual is wearing. Come into the parking lot, and right here, these guys are had just got done you know, they were kick as I was approaching, they were kicking and beating the shit out of this dude, calling him a faggot and shit like that. And my friend Colleen McClure is gay. I hung out me and Colleen used to go out and pick up girls together. I used to go with her down to eight mile to a dyke bar called Sugar Bakers. Gay bar. I'm sorry if ain't your I respect everybody. I do not like people who are racist and I don't like people who discriminate against others for things that do not concern or harm them in any way. Your sexual orientation is your private own and no one has a right to judge you on that. You're not harming anybody. If you're a rapist, you know, you should fucking die. Or a child molester. So these guys had just kicked the shit out of us, dude. They'd gotten away and walked over and were behind some few cars and we just made it into over here to where the basketball courts were. The brothers are sitting here and this night, on this night, they're both sitting in the front seat or, and they've got three girls sitting in the back. These guys said this shit. You know, I told them, called them, said something to them. Hey, you know, it's real manly, five on one, a bunch of punk bitches. And they called me a bitch and I told them, yeah, I'm your bitch. Why don't you come get some? And they agreed. So I came running across some cars on some very slippy shoes. Three of them were near a car like this, you know, off to the side. So I come running across the hood. I step on the hood of this car. And as I leap off of it, I kicked one in the face, knocked him out. Kicked another in the face. So while I'm still in the air, knocked him out. And as I was coming towards the ground to land, I punched the third and knocked his ass out. The remaining two ran their asses off, running past through here, and do 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 do. This used to just be a, a street, and they ran up here into the parking structure up to the next floor, and had gone in, chased them inside there. This road used to go straight through. Right here, this is where it was. This is all changed. So I chase them into up into this parking structure, the other two guys, and they hide from me. And I tried to get them to come out, and I told them, you know, I'm not going I'm just gonna beat the shit out of you a little bit. I mean, if you like to fucking hit people and hurt people, then you deserve to fucking. You should like getting hit and hurt. You know. My philosophy is. You know, um, I didn't like violence as a kid. I really didn't. I couldn't stomach it. But after Tammy died, all the bullies and punks I've seen, and all the people hurting each other, um, it changed me. I started working out and learning how to fight after Tammy was murdered. I beat the shit out of it. I get back across the street. I couldn't get these guys to come out. They just won't come out. So I get back over here, and these three dudes are finally getting up. The one that I kicked first in the head that was closest to a car, he's leaning up against it trying to get himself. And he opens his smart mouth. And I'm going to give him the talk about being bullies and how you shouldn't bully people and that you shouldn't pick on people. It's not right. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you, if you want to hit and beat up on people, you should like getting hit and beat up on yourself. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And this kid went shut his mouth, so he got clocked and knocked again to the ground. He kept his mouth open said some shit to me. I told him, look, man, I didn't give you permission to talk, knock him to the ground again. His buddy behind me, who's still laying on the basketball court, trying to get himself up, says, uh, you know, leave him alone. I turned around to him, approached him, and he put his hands on him and said, I don't want no more. I don't want no more. I'm like, okay, you motherfuckers need to get the fuck out of here. The brothers are laughing their asses off again in the car here. I go over to them. I'm all hyped up after beating the shit out of these five dudes like they were nothing but a bunch of little children. 
which they were, oversized children that don't know how to treat people properly. There's three girls in the back of the car. They were afraid of me, scared. The guys reassured him, he's okay, ain't gonna hurt nobody. And I told them, look, it's something I do on Halloween, my girlfriend, after she was murdered by a punk and a bully and a rapist, Lawrence Hahn, I started beating up people every Halloween. I go, I patrol this area every Halloween. And they told, the guys told them the same thing. I told them the same thing the guys had already told them. They knew my story. They knew about Tam. I shared it with them. Hung out, smoked a joint. These guys and girls could tell you exactly like I, what I looked like. And uh, that's the last really violent incident I can remember. Um, sometimes I would black out. Um, the raven would take over. But a funny one, which I say this to because I like positive things. I hate all this negative shit. Really don't like telling negative stories. And this whole thing is all friggin' negative. One night, now there's a light right here that shines down. I'm over here. Let's see if we can see in between these vans. I'm over here. I'm over here somewhere. I'll be right in here. I think it's right about there. Yeah, because that door was there back then, too. Or a window. I can't remember what it was. And uh, there's some garbage cans here. And I'm standing up here smoking a joint. And this couple comes around the corner. So I kneel down. And I take my trench coat and I put it over my head. And put it around me so I look like just a bag of garbage. And they come and they stand right next to me. I mean, right next to me. And start making out. Girls up against the wall. Guys got her up against the wall. Ball-headed dude. He's a um, good-sized guy. Definitely worked out. Husky dude. Um, beautiful blonde lady. <laughs> well endowed. And uh, they're making out. And the brothers are sitting over here and they're watching this. And they've rolled up the window in their car because they've got their hands over their mouth and they're laughing. And they're giggling. They're looking. I can see them. They're looking at me. I'm looking at them. And I slowly stand up, take a good hit off the joint, blow it in between them, and I go, boo! <laughs> they both go running. And, you know, it's friggin' hilarious. The brothers start laughing. They go running around the corner, and I'm laughing and screaming back at them, I'm sorry! Sorry! And the guy went around the corner. He comes back and looks down towards me, and I got my hands up. Look, look, man, I'm sorry. I was just having a little fun. And he's laughing. He's slapping his leg. He's laughing. He's half bent. Jesus fucking Christ, man. You scared the shit out of us. Oh, fuck. Like, oh, man, I'm sorry. And I get around the corner, and I see his girlfriend going inside. I'm like, oh, shit, dude. I'm sorry if I upset her, dude. He goes, no, no, no. You made her piss herself. <laughs> She's got to go take her underwear off and get cleaned up. <laughs> so I offer him the joint. He's like, oh, yeah, we wanted a joint. We were looking for one. And we're smoking and we're hanging out talking. And I apologize. And he said it was okay. And she comes back down. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to, you know, uh, um, frighten you that bad. And, uh, you know, I could tell she was a little scared of me and stuff. I'm like, you can punch me if you want. <laughs> so she did. She slugged me in that arm. I was like, you can hit me harder than that. You go right ahead, dear. You ain't going to hurt me one bit. And she did. She gave me a good bust in the arm. I think she ended up bruising me a little. I'm not sure. But she gave a good swing. And uh, the brothers laughed their ass off. I then went over and hung with them. And they always had a joint. And we uh, smoked a joint. But those are some of the people I would definitely remember. Those are some of the people I helped. Plus, um, that couple that were getting mugged, going over here to the diner, the couple that were getting mugged, do, 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 you know, I took it. It's down that, that way. Right? Well, I follow there. It's down there. Um, we're actually inside here one night, you know, the follow next Halloween or so. We were inside the diner, and um, I'd walked in. The cops were in here, too, and um, 
soon as they saw me, they were like, hey, you're that guy that saved us from getting mugged that one night. And the cops turned around looked at me real quick and stuff like that. And um, because of the police reports and stuff I had done, I was a little leery. I was pretty sure the cops knew what I, you know, had had these police reports. And they, these cops that were there, I don't know if they were from this area, but they gave me that look of, uh, we're looking for somebody like you. So I said to the couple, I go, I go, that wasn't me. You you probably just bumped into somebody else who was dressed up like me. Said that quickly, the cops, you know, they were just getting ready to leave. They'd just gotten up from the table, finishing their food and had paid their bill. And this, the couple that I had saved from getting mugged had uh, just come in. And um, the waitress, um, the girl who was behind running the cash register, looked at me and stuff. And they, you know, and uh, with like, uh, what's going on? And several people did. Um, when they said that, you know, I saved him from getting mugged. As soon as the cops left, I went and sat down at their table. I go, yeah, yeah, it's me. I go, you can't say that stuff in front of the cops. They're probably looking for me. But, you know, I'm the only one who dresses up this way, but not, at least now they think there's more. You know, that, that, that's why I said that. You know, I want them to think, yeah, everybody, there's several guys that dress up like this. But no, I'm the only guy ever dressed up that way. You know, you came across a guy dressed in a mind face. That's the reason why. And these were all the assaults that I can recall that took place here. Um, when I lived in Oxford, I did go to, I, I worked at, um, um, so that would be like the people who I hung up out City Club. You know, they, several of them would remember would remember me on Halloween. I'm pretty sure people I, I saved would remember me. Now, let's see. And we're going to pause it at that. And I'm going to take you next to, um, to Oxford. But let's get, before we do, let's get back to Pontiac. We'll go start from Tammy's house. Okay, I got kicked out of Pontiac School District after Tammy died um, for saving a kid from getting mugged and was killed in the school by a guy from Young Boys Incorporated, which was a gang out of Detroit back in the day. All right, let's see. All right, I'm a little off here. Where's North? North? Come on, baby, give me North. There we go. Now I got my bearings. Let's see. Berry Street. There we go. Alright. Uh, this, this is... You can see here Tammy's house. Where Tammy died. Um, this is Perry. It's also known as M24. It's Lake Orion Township. Oxford. I believe... This is Drainer. We lived in Oxford, lived off of Drainer Road. Uh, hold on here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's easy to spot our old house. This is my father's old house. Um, only other homes there used to be is these homes in the front. No homes here. Nothing over here. It's all fields. Um, no homes here. No houses. Gas station right here. There was nothing here. Okay, no homes here. Off to the side here, absolutely nothing. There was these two homes there. Nothing here. Back then, wow. Yeah, this is this nothing here. This is just all um, um, woods we used to run through. That's where I used to go running at. Now, back in the day, I worked here at Oxford Video. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get down to street level here. And I was going to take a break, but we're gonna, I want to leave off with you at Oxford Video. Let me get this down. Boom. Here we go. All right. I'm going to head down the street here. And a little bit further. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oxford Video had had uh, started off way down at the other end of town. 
Mm. Hold on, make sure we go too far. Right, this is where Oxford Video, the first one video before Blockbuster. I was working here just when Blockbuster started. Yeah, this right here, this used to be Oxford Video. This is across the street from, uh, used, I don't know what they, yeah, it's still Choo Choo's Chocolate. You can buy chocolates there and learn how to make chocolates there. My stepmother Sandy went there. Right down here is downtown Oxford. Just give you kind of a roundabout view. Oxford Marketplace. This didn't exist back then. This building was here, and this very front was Oxford Video. I used to work here. I would always, people who came into the store um, would see me dressed up as you did in, on the cover of the comic book every Halloween. Um, between the year of uh, 1986 and 1987. Um, that Halloween, several people came into the store. You know, they come in to get Halloween videos. I was passing out candy. A few people took my picture. I took my picture with a few people. And this is before the comic book came out. You'd see what I looked like exactly. So there's there. Um, those people um, that came to Oxford Video. I was hoping to track down some of them. Now, Brandos, yes, the Brandos sisters were two twins that worked with me at Camp Oakland. And they lived down here. In the, uh, 1987, when I got off work, I went for a little walk before I was going to head to City Club. It was still early. I think I got out of work at, we closed at 9 or 10, so we closed early. Well, we're just heading down Oxford. Walk. Okay, I'm trying to get right to the middle of downtown. Almost there. There's a light right here. Whoop. Oh, yeah. Oop, almost. Oh. So I walked all the way down here. I'm sure nobody's going to remember me just walking the street. But down this way, the Brando sisters lived. And I was walking, and I was heading over, I think it was this road, to walk home. Yeah, to go home. And the Brandos lived right, I heard them over here. I thought I'd just walk by and scare the shit out of them before heading off to City Club that night. This is going down the hill, just as you're going down the hill. They either lived, they lived in one of these, one, this house, that this house or or maybe this house can't be hundred percent sure but we all used to go to this store down here I think the store is still there let's take a look let's take a gander get this man these things move slow yeah hey look at there the store still there so I was up there at the Brando sister's house, and and they, um, they were having a party, and their sister, somebody took a picture of me, and I think maybe some of them might remember me. So, and um, some of my friends were the past, my buddy Eric McClure, he don't remember me dressing up that way, the guy was drunk all the time, Art, Art's a coward, my friend Art, um, yeah, my buddy, Art, Art was more Eric's friend than mine. Me and I almost got in a fight a few times. Um, but yeah, he don't want anything to do with this. A few people don't. Um, but those are the people I committed assault on, and some of the people who would have seen me dressed up the way I did on Halloween that might remember me. You know? And it's always nicer to get, you know, side stories of what others remember. Not to rely on just one individual telling you a story. 
you know, that was one of the things I did a lot of research trying to track these people down, but I wasn't able to do it. Um, so yeah, now we're going to pause and uh, stop shooting, and we'll continue to the next video. I'd like to thank you for your time and your interest in my story, and more videos to come.